Hello and welcome to the 19th part in this series of tutorial videos on programming in C. In this video we're going to have a further look at functions and look at variable scope. You see here I've already made a very simple program which should be self-explanatory if you've watched the previous videos. If I compile this program and have a look at the output, I've declared a variable here called myVar, an integer with a value of 6, print it to the screen. I then go off and call this function, sending myVar as an argument. This then prints the value also to the screen, returns then on line 13, carries on executing inside main, prints myVar again, and then the program ends. So we start, we print 6, we print 6, we print 6, and the program ends. What if inside function I take myVar, I set its value to 8, what do you think happens then if I then compile and run this program? When I run the program, it prints first of all in main my var as a value of 6 as expected, then prints at the start of function a value of 6, it then prints my var with a value of 8 as expected, but then back inside main it prints my var with a value of 6. And you may be wondering how that happens. Well, in C, when you call a function and you pass a parameter or some data, the function makes a copy of this parameter that you've sent and then uses this copy inside the function. So it doesn't actually do anything to the data that you sent in. So if you imagine that there's a box with my var with 6 in it, it makes a copy of this box and then changes the value of the copy to 8 to be further used in the function, in this case to be printed, before returning from the function back to main where my, view, my var still has the original value of 6. Now there, may, there, are, there is a way of altering the value of my var when you send it in from one function to another and it involves using pointers which we'll be covering in a later video. But when you don't use pointers, so you use sending the data in in this way, it will not change the value of whatever you send, it, send in, which is why in this case my var is actually retaining its value of 6. And the myVar that we're printing here in this function is not the same integer as the myVar that's in the main function here. It's a copy of it that was made when it was passed to function. So it's a very important thing to know. The next thing that I want to discuss there, now we've covered that little problem that you can have with C, is scope. So this code block belonging to the main function here is a scope for the main function. This code block belonging to function here is the scope belonging to function. And the whole file here is also a code what's called scope. And that's important to know because for instance if in function I remove the declaration of taking in my var here, I'm asking it here to print my var and here we've declared my var. So if I run the program again, or comp sorry, compile the program, you see now it's giving me an error and it's saying that on line 22 my var is not declared. You may think, well it is declared, it's declared here inside main. But variables are only visible inside the scope in which they've been declared. So in this case, in main, my var can be used and only from this point in main. So if I tried to print my var here on line 7, it also wouldn't print because it doesn't exist yet. Variables only exist from where they're declared and inside the scope where they're declared. So function here can't see my var because it's been declared inside the scope of main. And the same would be vice versa. But what I could do instead is actually declare my var, give it a value of 2 let's say, outside the main function. And now my var is declared in the scope of the entire file and therefore is visible for both functions. So if I just save this program now and run, and now you'll see that my var starts off with a value of 2 because it's been declared in the scope of the entire file with 2. It's then changed to 6 and printed. 
Now we go into this function and it's not taking anything as a parameter, it's not making any copy, which means it's using this raw my var here, which currently has a value of 6, and prints it as 6. It now changes the value of this my var, which it's using to 8, and prints it as 8. And now when we go back into main, you'll find that the value has stayed as 8, because we've not made a copy, and both functions are working on the same variable which is visible to both of them because it's been declared in this whole scope and both functions are inside this scope. So there are different levels of variable visibility. One more trick or tricky thing that can come up when you're programming that's dangerous, particularly dangerous when you're declaring variables in what's called a global way here, which means they're visible to everything in your code. If I now declare a variable here called myVar, so it has nothing to do with this variable here, even though it has the same name, and set its value to, let's say, 80, and now save the program. Let's have a look at what happens when we compile and run this program. Compile's OK with no complaints, and now we run the program, and I'll scroll down a bit. And now we have, as expected, myVar is 2, myVar is 6. We go into function, and now it prints myVar is 80. So it's using this myVar here. It's not doing anything to this one up here at all. And in fact, it now sets the value to 8 and prints it. And when we go back into main, we find that myVar now has a value of 6. And that's because if you declare a variable with the same name again at a different scope, each function in your program will simply use the variable that is at the lowest scope, if you see what I mean. So We've got two myVars declared here available for function. And the one at the lowest scope is the one that's been declared inside the code that's only for this function. So it's going to work on this one and ignore the other one. And this is one reason why, particularly I think in lectures and things, teachers of C uh, are always against using what are called global variables, which are variables that are declared in this way, which are visible throughout your program is because you can end up with if you're not careful with your naming of your variables in large programs very very bad bugs where you're not sure um, why things aren't calculated correctly because you've actually used the same name twice but because of this scoping the functions are working on different variables and values, uh, values to what you thought of so I'd recommend taking this program here and just playing around a little bit with declaring the variables in different places and having a look at the results you get from the program. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope it made a little bit of sense about scope. In the next video, we're going to have a further look at using functions. Thanks very much. Comments, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.